Hola, mi gente. Como estas? What y'all up to? How y'all living? It's Monday the 16th. I got back from my walk, showered. I chilled naked for a minute because that's what I did. And now I'm about to clock in to work. And it is 8.30. 1 a.m. I'm so tired. My appointment's at 11 o'clock. All right, y'all, I'm heading to my appointment now. Wish me luck, send positive energy, positive vibes, positive everything, and um, I will be seeing you when I get back. Bye. Ooh, my hair, okay. Hola, mi gente. I am back from the doctor. <sighs> it was a rather quick appointment, but results is what's gonna take a while and stuff. So by next week, hopefully I can close the door in this chapter of my life. And um, I mean, I still gotta go for my every three months um, checkup for my kidney and liver. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm kind of happy to be getting this kidney check because I've been having like kidney pains. So I wanna see how she's doing because she is a little under the GFR number. It's like one number under where it should be. And um, doesn't seem like a lot but that puts you in like a kidney disease um category hopefully everything works out and i'm not i'm gonna try not to obsess over results because what is that gonna do i'm not gonna get no answers until next week so i mean i don't want to sit up here and stress it and i really can't do anything about it really so I'm gonna try not to obsess, but like lightweight, no, then in the back of my head, like I'm lightweight obsessing. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it funky with y'all, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better with my like obsessive behaviors and stuff like that. I'm just cooling it now because it just, all it does is work me up. And then I think the worst possible outcome. And then everyone's dying around me and I just feel really helpless because I can't do anything about these thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. <sighs> Telling my mom that I have OCD, like, she was like, I could always tell <laughs> since you were small, like my repetitive like behaviors and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting no help for it. She's just like, yeah, she's crazy and she just does it over and over again. It'll go. Cool. She thinks these thoughts over and over again. It's cool. Like, don't even worry about it. I think it has a lot to do with trauma, you know, but maybe that's just how my brain is wired, you know. But I really felt like it was trauma related because of the, the kind of obsessive thoughts that I was having even as a youth, you know. So, um,. I definitely feel like it was connected to my trauma when I was younger and um, so I think let's tie it all together now this is why I get so antsy about people not texting me back when I'm in worry mode is because some shit that happened to me when I was a kid and I would always be worried about my mom when she wouldn't come at the time like in my my and I always thought something bad happened to her because I watched um, her be abused by my ooh was that a yellow jacket lord i watched um my mom be abused by my father so when she didn't come back i always assumed the worst like he did something to her and that she wasn't going to come back to me so now when i think example would be my friend heavy heavy fucking drinker right he um when he wouldn't text me back I would think the worst, like he got in a car accident, he was riding his motorcycle and something happened to him. And so I would get obsessive over it. And then when I wouldn't hear from him, I would start crying, thinking the thing happened to him. And then it would just be like, my mind would go crazy. It would just go crazy, Lord. And it's no way to live really, honestly. And to have people around you that can create that kind of anxiety is not good either, because I'm naturally going to worry if somebody is living recklessly, you feel? So, um, 
that energy was very 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 hard on me because i'm a warrior like i worry about people when my ex um he used to be like i'm gonna be home in 15 and then it would go past the 15 i would be like blowing his spot up because i'm like where are you what are you doing are you good and i would think the freeways in san diego were like horrendous that he got in a car accident so the only way that i could calm down was the bank account right because it would just show like oh well he stopped at the gas station oh he stopped at uh to get food and then it would just calm me down like okay he's good you know what i mean if my mom is driving home in the rain i get panicky until she i know she's at home and i'm like call me when you get home and then when she doesn't she forgets often to call me when she gets home when i know it's raining really bad over there <sighs> and then i start <clears throat> thinking the worst but instead i'll just call her and be like hey are you home so i don't go and spiral you know what i mean but if somebody doesn't pick up when i'm spiraling then like obviously my mind goes to like the worst possible place with the worst possible outcome and the likelihood of these things happening are very slim right but not in my head they are very probable like it's gonna happen so I don't know it picked up a little bit more when after I had my accident because then I'm like yeah the likelihood just went up from slim to none to like there's a possibility that this could happen you know so you know, like anxiety is future worries depression is like past worries you know what I mean like so <clears throat> if you stay in the present moment you don't be having those kind of worries. You don't have those kind of thoughts. It's the minute that you take your mind off of the present and you go in the past or you look to the future is when things start happening mentally. And then the what ifs call them for my OCD. <laughs> I have more anxiety than I do depression. What the hell is that? Um, but that's because I'm always the what in the what if column. I'm always like worrying about the future, my future, and what happens in my future, and what happens in my kids' future, and finances in the future, and everything in the future is my biggest like all the time issue. So I freaking I have a lot more anxiety than I do depression. Depression does come and go for me, but um. It's not on the level of anxiety. If I had to like order them, it would probably be anxiety, OCD, depression is the order. And because my OCD only acts up when I'm stressed, it's not like it's all the time. It's just been very active within the last month or so because of the energy that I'm around, because of the things that are going on, because like those things heavily influenced because obviously like if my dog is sick then my mind is like oh my gosh what if I have to like do something it, like it's just stuff like that the guinea pig and just like I don't know I just tend to worry but <clears throat> it all stems from a place in my life where like here's what I needed because there's times in my life where I don't feel in control of my life right so I need somebody that can give me the ability to be out of control while I'm still in control you know and then and it's weird because I'm not a like a controlling person by nature I control certain circumstances like finances and stuff like that because that's the type of shit that worries me you know what I mean but I'm not controlling in nature that's like not me to be controlling in nature but I have controlling tendencies when it comes to certain things because I will start to worry about the thing behind it it's like seeing a bus coming towards you right but you stand there, you don't move. There's hella butterflies today, nice. But you don't move, you just stand there and wait to get hit and I'm like, listen, I'm trying to tell you, do this so you can move out the way so you don't get hit by the bus, but the bus just keeps coming and that person will just stand there. I don't like that feeling. So I try to anticipate things that are gonna happen before they happen so that they're covered. You know what I mean? That's just the way I work, uh, that it helps me better because if you forecast something out and you're like yeah I know at the end of the month I got to deal with x y and z which x y and z for me is all these gosh darn pet appointments and my son starting college and my daughter's birthday 
all at the end of the month, right? So those are the types of things that I have to anticipate because they're, they're gonna be here. But at the beginning of the month, people are not really thinking about that, but that's the shit I be thinking about at the beginning of the month. What's gonna happen at the end of the month, right? So that's the kind of shit. This is how my anxiety comes into play because then I'll start worrying about things that haven't happened yet and anticipating that they won't happen the way that I anticipate, you know what I mean? So those are the kind of things that give me anxiety in my adult life <clears throat> another thing is like people raising their voices i've always been very very sensitive to that because of my upbringing you know what i mean and my mom's wild with her raising of her voice and my father and her together was wild so like the way that it is now the dynamic is my mom be raising her voice but my dad don't really say shit you know and that's kind of like how i tend to do things unless you get pushed there and i noticed that my dad and me are the same way like we could take a lot but once you take it there it's hard to calm it down and it'll keep going and going and going so that's why i don't like to take it there because i don't like to be in that heightened state and like i said it really really hurts my heart in the the most physical sense it will really break my heart like I don't see the point of yelling and screaming and doing all that shit. I don't see the point. So just let's talk it out and we can keep our blood pressures low and I don't got to go through all the drama that comes with raising my voice. You know what I mean? Because it's hard to calm down after that. So, yeah, I just realized, you know, I got things to work on, but I also notice, I also think like, whoever is invited into my energy next is gonna be well aware and be very understanding to my plight because I know that there's people out there that have mental health issues and I just couldn't see myself being like yo that's a little too much for me sorry but some people are like that and I'm just like no not I but also because I worked in a psych ward I worked in the psych ward for the Navy and that was probably the best job I ever had in my life. I know it sounds weird, but it was so rewarding. It was so rewarding. I loved all the patients that were there. We always had talks and they told me when I was there, they were like, listen, they don't really interact with, with, you know, um, staff on that level so when they would come when I would come in and they would give me a hug and they would be just so happy to see me like to me that was just a confirmation of the energy thing because they didn't fuck with people you know what I mean and they see me and they would be like Tori and it would be great you know I miss doing that kind of work I would love to go back and work in the psych ward again and I don't know honestly I feel like they're my people's People that are going through a rough time and they don't know how to get out of that space, those are my people, you know? And we would sit there, I would lead groups and I wasn't even qualified to do that, but I would lead groups because they would open up to me and it would be great. And technically my job title was a clerk there, but I did so much more and I loved it so much. I ended up switching to the, the these were the, the patients that I worked with were free to roam around. And then I went to the other side and it was inpatient and they were not free to roam around. And it looked like, it was the saddest thing. Like my heart would always hurt when I would go over there. I would talk to them like through their, through their glass door or whatever. And I would just shoot the shit with them when I could. But um, they, encourage us not to talk to the patients on that side because they said like you could flip a switch or something you know like again they can get triggered and then all of a sudden they're like trying to attack you or something like that i've seen like where like they've had to sedate people it just all makes me so sad like thinking about it because these are human beings that served their country and came back with something that they didn't even ask for you know what i mean and it hurts because they'll see things that an everyday person will never see will never see i remember my friend pete pedro before he uh mm, emotions it's good it's good it's good it's good it's good it's good before he committed suicide uh we spent a lot of time talking 
and he would show me pictures of uh like shit that happened in the service i believe was he army i believe he was army he had a nice little arsenal on him as far as guns went like he had a ton um he taught me how to shoot in front of my apartments which was probably a sign right then but he said i needed to learn and so he taught me how to shoot right in front of my i had never fired a firearm in my life i've never touched a firearm in my life and here i was in front of my apartments learning how to shoot with this person he brought me like at first he didn't fuck with our family because our kids were loud and we share a wall and they were loud and he would come complain about the kids and then one day i don't remember what happened that our we ended up talking like really talking not for him to complain and he became like so close to my heart i think this is why like i take this kind of stuff like so seriously is because not only did i work in the psych ward but i missed a sign with one of my friends uh, I still have his pens from the military um, in my stuff <laughs> but um I missed a sign with a friend that something was going on but there was a lot more to the story that I didn't even know like I didn't know he was going downtown with all his guns I didn't know that part in his uniform he was out of the military but he was dressing up and going downtown in his his fatigues and I didn't know that and then um <sighs> fuck anyways he he showed me a lot of pictures of like bodies that were dead that he just saw and I don't know why he felt compelled to capture those moments but I'm sure those are the moments that kept him up at night you know um seeing somebody no longer breathing um, whether it was to protect yourself the people around you where it was one of your own it's hard to look at you know there was a lot of friendly fires i remember in the beginning of um the afghanistan uh, war because a lot of people were not being not fully trained yet and they were having to go out there and there were so many friendly fires i just remember hearing like these were acts these are accidents that didn't need to happen and it would break my heart because i would think about their families and stuff but anyways uh pete was a very good friend of mine and he ended up bringing me a plant that i named pete another cactus and name it pedro because i had that thing forever it was branching out and making more plants and he told me like forever that i could because i was like i have a black thumb like it'll kill the plants i don't want to kill them and he was like no anyone can take care of a cactus and he brought me one one day and i kept that thing for as long as um i was able to and it was beyond my control that he didn't survive because he was thriving and i couldn't wait to bring him to, i was excited to bring him to texas i was like this this is my fucking environment you know Pete was one of a kind. I was really devastated to hear when I know I was at home that day and one of my neighbors was like, something happened to Pete. And I remember the ambulance coming up and it was silent. So I knew then that um, he wasn't here. And uh, I couldn't watch them take him away. He's a big dude, like six something, you know? He was pretty solid. And um, my life had forever changed. April 2009, like. I can't believe it, like, yeah, it still hurts the same. It still hurts the same. But he was a good guy. And he had PTSD 
him. And so when I looked at those people, all those, some of them were babies in that psych ward, you know what I mean? Like, it just would break my heart. And I think what they felt for me was me connecting with them and feeling their their pain and feeling their energy, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I would love to go back and work in the psych ward and I would love that job again, honestly. I never really felt taxed like I do with everyday people, but I really feel like something in behavioral health is me, you know, because I can feel them and I know they're, they're not bad people. They've just seen things that ordinary people wouldn't see. I don't know why I'm feeling Pete so strong today. I wish you guys got to know him. He like had this really hard exterior, but he was like this big teddy bear and he loved to talk to me. Like we would talk for so long. And maybe because no one listened to him, you know. Like he said that people didn't want to hear his stories and stuff. Yeah, that's why they have the American Legion though. My grandpa used to like live over there and they would get together and tell their stories together. And I think you do need that outlet sometimes. If it consumes your thoughts, it come, becomes obsessive and I understand that. And so that's why I can't even get mad at them, you know, because I know like if you see some image sometimes when I close my eyes, I see things from my past, you know, and then it becomes one of those things where you try to, you want to dull that pain and you want to like forget that these things happen to you and sleeping is supposed to be a, like a peaceful state of mind, but um, for me, it's a place where like sometimes nightmares would live, you know, and so I remember having out of body experiences and seeing myself getting hit by the car and seeing myself, you know, being molested, like raped and, and, and shit like that. And I, I could see it happening to me, but it, it's above, you know, I'm above the situation. So I'm watching this situation happen to me. It's crazy. Like it, it's mad crazy. Um, it's hard to describe how that is, but sleep became kind of like an enemy to me because I had so many PTSD moments of, you know, abuse, um, sexual assault, and, and stuff. So I understand that sleep is not always as peaceful as people make it, which is why I don't typically get a lot of sleep because my sleep, my my dreams are so real, and sometimes they're a past event, you know, so I don't sleep, and I tend to, like, deal with people that have a hard time sleeping, so that I have people to talk to, and uh, my neighbor, one of them, she used to never sleep, too, and so we would just be up together not sleeping, and, um, yeah, that's why I was saying, like, I hope to find someone that can 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 calm me enough that I feel like it's okay to sleep, you know? It's okay to rest because I don't ever like feel that feeling. I just feel like I have to be up and worrying about stuff and when I close my eyes sometimes it's just not a good thing. And a lot of people can sleep or like say sex is supposed to relax you enough to sleep. I don't have that either. I will stay up. You know, like I just, I be up and it's not good. Then I'll get the normal like two hours and then I feel panicky. Like I have to get up. Like my body just tells me, you, you gotta be up. It's weird. If you don't want to see these visions, go get yourself up. And so that's when I'll be working out. No matter where I'm at, like my mom's house or wherever. This last time I was there was the first time I didn't work out, not one day over there. I regretted it weight-wise, I'm not going in front on you. 
but I didn't work out not one day over there and um, I didn't sleep over there either like I was up the whole time I was there the last time like I felt like I never slept no matter if I partook if I drank if it doesn't matter what I was doing I crossing them cross fading um, I still wasn't sleeping I was up pretty much for those what nine days I was there ten days I was there I was up the whole time I came back home fully tired exhausted still up like this shit is wild because I have every intention of being like I'm exhausted I want to go to sleep but my body is like no rest for the wicked <laughs> Y'all, I just watched a little bit of the news on uh, the stuff going on in Afghanistan. It makes me a little anxious because I obviously know people in the military and stuff. But um, on top of that, you know, I have a son that could be called up for select, you know, uh, what do they call it? Select reserve or whatever uh, if they need people and all that shit. Um... I don't know. It just gives me a lot of anxiety. Yeah. They're talking about they had enough um, weaponry to give to 300,000. Uh, it just sounds like a lot. A lot. It sounds overwhelming. And it's just putting me back in that whole state of uh, when we were like actively participating in war over there. It was a very stressful time because um, a lot of people were leaving their families, you know, a lot of men and women were called to go and defend our country several times and uh, it's just got to be hard. But honestly, I think about Terrell in like this moment because he's a pilot and he most certainly would be useful in a situation like this and although he has orders to elsewhere you just I mean he doesn't have real control over his life like that so maybe he would go somewhere else you know and end up there for I don't know how I can't remember how many times he told me he was there like 14 fucking times a lot of fucking times, you know, and um, emotions, fuck, he was worried about leaving this time because he always worries about coming back and um, I don't blame him for worrying about that. Anytime there's like a possibility for things to get very, very heightened, uh, it's a scary time. And um, all I know is I hope that he's good and I hope that he doesn't have to go out there again. And you know, it's hard to have people in the military sometimes, especially like I said, I feel like the army and the, the marines I just remember how many times my friend's husband was gone and how many times she needed him and how many times she had breakdowns because he wasn't there and all that shit is fucking hard because I lived that life myself I had two kids without a spouse by my side I, I freaking I lived that life but um I don't know starting to get fidgety I don't know I just hope that um whatever's going on he's safe and it was already bad enough with his first orders and hopefully he doesn't get any changes that I mean he's an adrenaline junkie so like maybe he might enjoy it I don't know I just don't know that I'm there for that kind of adrenaline you know and I don't know that I would get any sleep knowing that he was over there you know what I mean so hopefully this withdrawal stays a withdrawal and doesn't have to turn into anything else but I just pray for everyone's safety 
and their return and all the people trying to escape um, that have lost their lives trying to leave. I'm so sorry. It's, it's awful no matter where you're from. Just to know or to foresee like what the future is going to hold with the Taliban taking over. It's probably so scary to everyone. Um, be safe, you know, all that good shit.